our Sunday School lesson for June 25th, 2017, Lesson 4. We're coming from Unit 1, and the title of Unit 1 is Called to be Strong. And our lesson title for June 25th is Destined for Greatness. Our devotional reading is taken from the Book of Judges, chapter 13, verses 9 through 23. Our background scripture is Judges, chapter 13 through chapter 16. Our printed passage is also Judges, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 7, and verses 24 and 25. In our key verse, reads, Lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Judges 13, verse 5. Our lesson name as a result of experiencing this lesson, the student should be able to do the following. Recount the details of Samson's birth and call. Empathize with the emotions Samson probably experienced regarding lifestyles restriction imposed on him and others. List some ways that unforeseen circumstances prepare people for leadership roles today. Destined for greatness. As we continue in our study in the book of Judges, we find the same reoccurring thing is that Israel falls and backslides and turn away from God and then God judges them using surrounding nations as a rod of chastisement. And then upon Israel repentance for their sin that God raises up a deliverer and deliver Israel time and time again. So we find in verse 1 of our lesson where it states, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines forty years. And the children did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Now this evil which they did can be found stated in Judges, the 10th chapter, verses 6 and 7, where it says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam and Ashtoreth and the gods of Syria, the gods of Sedom, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord, and served not him. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for forty years. Israel did evil as they had done, and then God delivered them as he had done into the hands of their enemies. But now God has delivered them into the hands of the Philistines. God made use of them as a rod of chastisement against his people. And they were more oppressive. And this trouble lasted longer than any previous chastisement that they had endured. For it continued 40 years because of the great distress that Israel was in gave an occasion for the rising up of a deliverer. For this purpose was Samson was born. 
He was born to deliver God's people. So we find in verses 2 and 3 of our lesson where it states, And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was burdened and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Manoah of the Danites and his wife was barren without child. They had no child. And it is observed in Scripture that several eminent persons of the Scriptures were born to women that who had been barren for a long time, such as Isaac, Jacob, Samuel, and even John the Baptist. And so we see that the angel of the Lord, it says that the angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife. Now we have to understand when we see that the angel of the Lord this particular angel, as distinguished in Scripture from all others, is often referred to in the Old Testament, such as in Genesis 16 and 9, where the angel of the Lord spoke to, to, to Hagar. In, in uh, Genesis 22 and 11, the angel of the Lord spoke to Abraham, Exodus, where he spoke to Moses. And so we see that this angel of the Lord in, in uh, Judges where, where he spoke to um, Joshua. But the angel of the Lord is what is known as a theopony. It says that he is the pre-incarnated Lord Jesus Christ himself before he became Christ Jesus, that he is deity. And so this angel of, of the Lord is also called, the name of the angel of the Lord is the name of the angel of Jehovah. You can find that in Genesis 16 and 7. The angel of God, Genesis 21 and 17. The angel of God's presence. This angel is clearly identified with the Lord himself in his self-manifestation to men. We find in Genesis 31, verses 11 through 13, where the angel said to Jacob, I am the God, God of Bethel. In Exodus, the third chapter, verses 20, excuse me, Exodus, the third chapter, verses 2 through 6, the angel said to Moses, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham. We have to understand that divine attributes and prerogative are ascribed to this angel. In the light of the New Testament revelation, this Old Testament angel may properly be be identified with the pre-incarnated Son of God. The identification of this angel with our Lord harmonizes with his distinctive function in relations to the Godhead. For he is the eternal word through whom the visible God speaks and manifests himself. John 1, 1 said, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so now we see that this angel of the Lord, not an angel, but the angel of the Lord, is making an announcement to Manoah's wife that she shall bear a child. And that that child, not only that it would be a, a child, but it would be a son. And so we see in verses 4 and 5 of our lesson where it states, Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, 
and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. In his instruction to Manoah's wife, he gave the diet for the mother, a real strict diet. While she is with child, she was not to consume any wine, alcohol, or any unclean food for the health of the child physical being. For we today we can see the effects uh, when prenatal prenatal care is not extended in the right way, when the when the mother is not on a proper diet, when the mother ingests things that are harmful to to herself, it also also affects the child. When even today, when mothers smoke, drink alcohol, we can do drugs. We can see the effect that it has on the unborn child. Why? Because the unborn child is receiving its nourishment from the mother, and so that's why we are in a society now where we have children that are born with addictions to drugs and, and alcohol. So so the diet of the mother is very important. And so now the angel t tells her that the child was to be a Nazarite. Now he was not only concerned about the child's physical well-being, but also about the child's spiritual diet, okay? A Nazarite. A Nazarite is one that is separated or uh, concentrated, concentrated themselves to the Lord. That that they had put themselves apart for the Lord's use. The order or instruction of a, a Nazarite is stated in Numbers the sixth chapter, verses two through eight. A Nazarite was a person who s separated themselves completely unto the Lord for a period of time. It was a vow that they voluntarily took that they wanted to live a life that was pleasing unto God and that they wanted to concentrate themselves, themselves for a period of time so that the Lord, they can be used by the Lord and for a closer walk and a fellowship with him. Okay? And so, abstinence from wine, which was wine was the, the simple, I mean, the, the, the symbol of natural joy. Okay? We find stated in Psalms 104, Verse 15 where it says, And wine that maketh glad the heart of man. And so this abstination or refraining from wine was the expression of a devotedness where this Nazarite was showing which he found all his joy, his joy, her joy in the Lord. And 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 as we, as sanctified saints, set apart for God's use, we also should find our joy in the Lord. Philippians 3 1 says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4 and verse 4 also states, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, Rejoice, and so we should, should we should be able to say that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We should not need any outside stimulants 
to make us rejoice. Just knowing that, just knowing that we have a, a blessed Savior, knowing that we have a, 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 a heavenly Father, knowing that, that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, knowing that, that we have an eternal salvation that is reserved in heaven. Knowing that we had a, a Savior that said that he would never leave us or forsake us. That that should give us joy in spite of the circumstances that we should not need any outside things that would stimulate us to make us rejoice. Because we have the joy of the Lord is, is our strength. Now the long hair, naturally a reproach to a man was at once, talking about the Nazarite, was at once the visible sign of the Nazarite separation and willingness to bear reproach for the Lord's sake. Now, many of us today, you know, we, you know, we, we don't want to bear re reproach for the Lord's sake. We are more concerned about being liked by the world and what the world thinks of us. We are willing to compromise with the world because we don't want to be called narrow-minded or, 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 or whatever. But see, but a Nazarite, he was willing to visibly show up front that he was willing to, to, to take the reproach of the world for the Lord's sake. That, that what matters to him most was what the Lord, him or her, was what the Lord thought and felt than what man customs or what man thought and felt about them. And so now, with this, with this Nazarite, they had a period of time where they would take a vow. And, and, that, and that he was totally and separated unto the Lord, that 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 his life was, was, or her life was dedicated and separated for the Lord. Now, the, this Old Testament type of Nazarite, which was a type, is a type and is fine, is perfect fullness in Jesus Christ, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners. Hebrews 726 says that for such a high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Jesus was utterly separated unto the Father. Utterly separated unto the Father. In John 6.38, he says, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Jesus allowed no mere natural claim or relation to hinder or divert him as far as his earthly relationship would go to keep him from doing the will of of his father. We find in Matthews, we find in Matthews the twelfth chapter, verses forty six through fifty, where we we are told about how that while Jesus yet talked to the people, it says, Behold, his mother and his brethren stood outside designed to speak with him. Talking about Mary and and, and Jesus stepbrothers. Jesus, when he was told, he said that he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for who shall ever do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my mother, my brother, and my sister. So Jesus did not let any, any, physical, natural relationship hinder him from, from, from his relationship with God. Now, we have to understand, as I said earlier, that the common Nazarite vow was for a limited time. 
But Samson and Samuel were Nazarites for life. We find that that they were Nazarite Samson's mother, I mean, excuse me, uh, Samuel's mother. In, in, in uh, 1 Samuel 11, 1, see, as 1 Samuel 1, 11, she dedicated, made a promise that that son, if the Lord would bless her with, with her son, that she would return him to the Lord for life. So we see that Samuel and Samson, they was two that was dedicated from the womb for life. And so we read in uh, verses 6 and 7 of our lesson, it says, And then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. The woman came and told her husband, the glad tiding was given to the woman when she was alone. This announcement was made to her when she was alone. And now she gladly shares them with her husband. She describes the messenger as a man of God. His countenance was like the countenance of an angel. So powerfully commanding reverence and respect. His name she cannot give, nor the tribe or the city of Israel for, from which she felt he belonged or came from. He did not tell her, for, and for her part, she did not ask, because she was abundantly satisfied that he was a servant of God. That was enough from his manner and from the power of the things in his presence that he said. That was enough to satisfy her not to ask any questions. She gives Manoah a detailed account of both of the promise and of the instruction and the and the precepts of the child being a Nazarite, that he also might believe the promise and might on all occasions be a monitor and a help to her, to help her to observe and do the things that, that God was calling for her to do as a mother. And then that as, and then that as, as a husband and a wife, that they would jointly work together, jointly work together in fulfilling the thing that was necessary that God wanted done for the benefit and the use of this child. So many times today, you know, we see the, the raising of the child the material and the spiritual raising of the child is, is, is dumped on the mother alone. So many fathers that they had an attitude, well, as, as long as I go out and, 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 and work and, and provide money and material thing, well, the raising, of the, the raising and the nurturing and the instructions of the children, that's the woman's job. That's, that's woman's work, you know, and, and, and so, but here... God calls shows that both is needed in the nurturing physically and spiritually of children. We find in, in 1 Peter 
the third chapter, verse 7, where it says, For the husband to dwell with the wife according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. To be heirs together of the grace of life. So many times today in our societies, we see only the women, the mothers, taking the children to church. So often, you you walk into our, our, our houses of worship, the, the percentage of the women and children is greater than the percentage of the men. It'll be 70, it'll be 70 to 80 percent 80 women and children and, 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 and 30 to uh, the 20 percent men. Men, we have a responsibility. There, there is no greater example than, than for a young child, male or female, to, to see their father that will lead them and that will teach them in the scripture to see their father that will take them and guide them and 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 humble down before them in their sight and kneel before God in heaven asking God for instruction and strength to lead him that that he might be able to be the man that God is calling for that that he might be the the husband of the or the father that, and, 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 and this is a great mental picture that, that is embedded in the child's life to see that their father has a personal relationship with God, that their father is, is, is dependent on the omnipotent, all-powerful God and showing them how to be humble before God himself. There is no greater, there is no greater advice or, or impression that, that, that we men, that we can give our family is to be the spiritual leaders, to stand up and take our place. We always talk about that we want to take our place in the household, well, first of all, we, we need to stand up and take our place as, as the spiritual head of the household, not deferring it to the wife, but no, but you standing up and being the leader that God called men to be. And then maybe, and then maybe we will start getting the respect that we claim that we don't get. Well, to get respect, you gotta earn respect. It's as plain and simple as that. Okay, and so now, so fathers, we ought to take interest in the well-being of our children, not just the natural, but most importantly, the spiritual well-being. We are told in Ephesians six, verse four. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and the admonition of the Lord. We are, as husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, we are laborers together. That, and, and, and that we are heirs together of the grace and that we should be in this together, physically, materially, and spiritually, for the well-being and the edification of our families. And so we find in verses 24 and 25 of our lesson, and it says that the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move at times in the camp of Dan, Nezora, and Estola. The woman bare a son and called his name 
success. Even before manhood, there was occasions where the spirit of the Lord began to move Samson. We see where Samson, where he felt the purpose of his vows and saw the serious work to which his destiny was urging him. Samson was born. He was destined. He was destined for greatness. God had a purpose for Samson. He, Samson was destined. Destined for greatness. And his destiny was to, to begin the deliberation of Israel from the Philistines. He didn't finish it, but he began it. And it did not end until David ended the oppression of the Philistines. Because after Samuel, I mean, after Samson, then came Samuel, and then finally David. But he was to begin. But God has had, he was destined. For greatness. Now, we all say, well, that's that's all well and good. And you know, Samson was a man that you know that God had used for a particular purpose. But but don't you know Ephesians two two ten say that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God has ordained that we should walk in them. We as part of the body of Christ, we have been destined, designated for greatness. Maybe not as a, a leader of a, a, a mighty army to, to deliver a nation from oppression, but we have been destined for one thing, that we, all of us, as part of the body of Christ, can do. And that we have a destined destiny that is of power also and that God has made a destined object for us to do that is simply as this Acts 1 8 said but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria into the other parts of the earth. That's what we are destined for. All of us, all of us as, as part of the body of Christ, we are destined to be a witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be a light in the world and that we are to save, tell someone about the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and that will deliver them not from the Philistines but it will deliver them from the penalty and the power of sin. May God bless you and keep you.